People have tried to define the Internet of Things, but we already know the essential element to build interconnected systems. IoT systems are not complicated, but designing and building them can be a complicated task. But we already have today all the elements that we need to make the IoT a reality. What does that look like? The Internet of Things can be GPS tracking of city buses transmitted to your smartphone or a sensor that you swallow that measures how well your medication is working, or electronic price tags on store shelves that update wirelessly, or a thermostat that checks the weather and sets indoor temperature to save energy. Your first step in building an IoT device is figuring out how it will communicate with the rest of the world. Your choice of communication technology will directly affect your device's hardware requirements and costs. So, which networking technology is the best choice? Let's take a factory as a typical case for an IoT system. A factory would need a large number of connected sensors and actuators scattered over a wide area. A wireless technology would be the best fit. This is a wireless sensor network. Data from each sensor passes through the network node to node. The nodes in a wireless sensor network are low cost devices, so they can be deployed in high volume. They also operate at low power, so they can run on battery or even use technologies such as energy harvesting. An edge node acts as a gateway between the wireless sensor network and the Internet. It can also perform local processing, provide local storage, and can have a user interface. Yeah, the battle over the preferred wireless networking protocol is far from over, and there are multiple candidates. The first obvious wireless networking candidate for an IoT device is Wi-Fi because it's everywhere. Certainly Wi-Fi can be a good solution for many applications. Almost every house that has an internet connection has a Wi-Fi router. However, Wi-Fi needs a fair amount of power. There are a lot of devices that can't afford that level of power consumption. For example, sensors located in places that are difficult to power from the grid. But there are newer wireless technologies that allow for the development of low-cost, low-power solutions. These technologies support the creation of very large networks, very small, intelligent devices. Some of the R&D efforts to build these kinds of low-power networks include low-power radios that allow for years of battery life, energy harvesting as a power source, mesh networking for operation without human intervention, and new application protocols that allow devices to work completely autonomously. One of the major pieces of low-power wireless is the IEEE 802.15.4 radio standard. It was released in 2003. Radios that meet this standard provide the basis for low-power wireless systems. Power consumption of commercial RF devices is cut in half compared to only a few years ago, and we're expecting another 50% reduction with the next generation of devices. Devices must also perform their tasks in the shortest time possible to save energy. This means that their transmitted messages must be as small as possible. So this has implications for protocol design. And it is one of the reasons why 6 Lopan has been adopted by companies such as Arm and Cisco. Six low pan provides encapsulation and header compression mechanisms that allow for briefer transmission times. At Micrium, we believe that any protocol that carries IP packets has advantage over all others. The requ requirements for IoT devices are so diverse that a single technology just can't meet all the requirements for range, power, size, and cost. But we believe that 6 Lopan will be the choice for wireless center networks and for other IoT systems with personal area network that need IP-based protocols. If your IoT network is local and machine-to-machine, -machine, then the network protocols that we've discussed are good candidates. But if your goal is to remotely control devices or send data over the Internet, then you'll need IPv6. If at all possible, it's crucial that your IoT networks all make use of the suite of Internet protocols. That's UDP, TCP, SSL, HTTP, and so on. And for the short term, IPv4 is certainly usable and dependable. 
but if you want to future-proof your IoT systems, your networks should support IPv6. Why? Because the current IPv4 standard faces a global addressing shortage, as well as limited support for multicast and poor global mobility. IPv6 provides more addresses than there are grains of sand on Earth. Or to put it another way, that's a million, trillion, trillion addresses per person. With IPv6, it is much simpler for an IoT device to obtain a global IP address, which enables efficient peer-to-peer -peer communication. The importance of IP networking to the Internet of Things doesn't mean that non-IP networks are automatically useless. It just means that your devices will require a gateway in order to reach the Internet. Your local network is only one small part of the Internet of Things. In our next video, we're going to be talking about the things themselves, embedded devices running embedded software. Mm -hmm.